day of hilarity in the online space. Elon Musk arrived at the Twitter headquarters carrying an actual literal sink. He tweeted, let this sink in. <laughs> God, the biggest fucking nerds, dude. <laughs> Got him. He's so funny. Elon Musk, he's so funny. I love his sense of humor. I, I gotta say, like, the, the, the fact that Elon Musk is somewhere between an Atlas Shrug character and a Bond villain is really one of the great things about American economic life these days. Here's what that video sounded and looked like. You can actually see Musk walking in. <laughs> no, what he is is a lame ass. Laughing with everybody carrying in the sink. No one knows what's going on. Pretty spectacular stuff. He then tweeted out that he was meeting some wonderful people at Twitter. And uh, I can only hope that that means that all the people he is not meeting, he is going to fire. Now, the, the reason that it makes rather a large difference, whether Elon Musk comes in, there, there's some economic reasons why it will be good for Twitter. And then there are some actual reasons why it will be good for the United States of America on an economic level. One of the reasons it might be good for Twitter is because Twitter, as far as I'm aware, has never run a profit. I'm not aware that Twitter is actually a money-making machine. And you can see why a video was put out by one of the Twitter employees showing what a day in their life is like. And let me just say, it looks like a vacation spa. It looks like nobody does any work around there. And they all sit around playing foosball all day. Oh, damn, it's so, wow. Better working conditions than what I allow? Unacceptable. I'm sure that's the reason why it fucking is, is not profitable. Has this motherfucker seen Tesla? Like, what are you talking about? Has Elon Musk ever turned profit that wasn't on the government dime? This motherfucker is so culture war obsessed that, and he loves how Elon triggers the libs that he forgot that Tesla, literally every company Tesla oper uh, Elon operates is single-handedly held up by either government subsidies or other uh, measures that the government has allowed them to fucking make money off of, like, because they're building a fleet of, you know, electric vehicles, they are able to get money from other companies that are not doing that. You know what I mean? It's like, and he's also failed. He's failed so many fucking times despite being propped up by the government. It's so stupid. He's going to now point to what? Like, uh, dumbass amenities that the company offers so you don't actually fucking do a mutiny or a, a labor union? To be like, this is why it's not profitable. Ben Shapiro, Mr. I know the economy, Mr. Economy Understander, Mr. Harvard fucking law graduate over here is going to unironically do the corporate America version of like avocado toast is the reason why millennials can't buy a home. Like every single one of those amenities in the day in the life videos that you see from these tech Andes is literally so that they stay at the workplace longer, dumbass. Is so that they don't ask for fucking, is so that they ask for more money for a larger percentage of the profits. All day, here is a video from one of the Twitter employees, not all that long ago, a day in the life of Twitter. In my life as a Twitter employee. So this past week went to SF for the first time at a Twitter office, badged in, honestly took a moment to just soak everything in. What a blessing. Also started my morning off with an iced matcha from the perch. Then I had a meeting, so quickly scheduled one of these little pod rooms, which were so cool. They're literally noise canceling. Took my meeting, got ready for bunch. Look how delicious this food looks. Oh my goodness, I was so overwhelmed. Then made my way down to this log cabin area. I don't know what this is, but it was really cool. Played some foosball with my friends to kind of- There are no- These videos are so fucking cringe, okay? They're cringe as fuck, but like, there's a reason for why companies do this shit. And I'm sure SpaceX and Tesla probably have similar amenities as well. It's every fucking Silicon Valley tech company that operates this way. So they can justify fucking bringing on interns and like having them maintain, being, having them be interns for as long as they possibly can. It's, the, it's, it's done with a deliberate and specific purpose. It's to underpay the employees. It's to make them stay for longer at the fucking workplace. Unwind a bit. Went to the library to kind of get mm. some more work done. Obviously, so there's there's that. That's that's great. Coffee, so. Now, by the way, it, it should be noted that the Twitter price to, to earnings ratio has been historically extraordinarily 
out of whack because Twitter has virtually no revenue, but it has a worth that is very, very, very high. Oh, wait. You mean, you mean to tell me Elon Musk did bought another overvalued company? Wow. Hmm. What Ben just said here reminds me of a certain company. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Tesla. Again, no analysis whatsoever, okay? Literally just pure culture war bullshit. He's like, Elon triggers the libs. Elon triggers the libs, and that's why I'm going to act like he's a master businessman. If he was a fucking annoying lib, I would be ripping into Tesla right now. And so what that means that they've been blowing through money like nobody's business. Well, that is just one of the many tech companies that have been essentially propped up by an easy money policy that has been followed for the past several years. It's not just Twitter, of course. The New York Times reporting today that Google this week reported a steep decline in profits. Social media companies like Meta said that advertising sales have rapidly cooled off. Microsoft predicted a slowdown through at least the end of the year. Tech companies led the way for the U.S. economy over the past decade and buoyed the stock market during the worst days of the COVID pandemic. Now amid stubborn inflation and rising interest rates, even the biggest giants of Silicon Valley are signaling tough days may be ahead. The companies are navigating the same problems as the rest of the economy, pumped up by the aggressive consumer spending during that pandemic. They invested to keep up with demand. Now as the spending is slowing, they are trying to adjust and it has not been easy. And it shouldn't be easy, frankly, because a lot of these companies don't actually earn the monies. Yeah, there are certain companies, like Meta, where Facebook actually earned an enormous amount of money from advertising revenue. But if you're looking at Twitter, what exactly is the investment priority over at Twitter? How do they even make their cash? Nobody seems to understand this business. Well, Musk, having now paid well over market value. For Wait, isn't he literally just saying Elon is such a fucking idiot for buying a company that no one understands how they make revenue, how they generate revenue? Like, first of all, that's really stupid because, like, of course people understand how people uh, generate, how Twitter generates revenue. They generate revenue through ads, right? But, like, how are you saying, like, Elon Musk is such a fucking Bond villain and an Ayn Rand character? He's such a brilliant businessman. And then simultaneously be like, Twitter sucks. It's dog shit. It's the worst company in America. And very similar to how overvalued Elon Musk's other company, Tesla, is. This is like ripping into Elon. He's literally just shitting on Elon in this entire video without actually mentioning Elon Musk's name. But because, like, you're supposed to like Elon Musk because he's owning the libs, you, you read this as like, oh, man, he's just owning the libs. Isn't that so funny? For Twitter is going to have to actually bring people into line. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, in an economy as volatile as this one, it's important to have control when you're making a big purchase, like, you know, a brand new car. And this is where my new partners over at Carzing come into- <laughs> What the fuck? Half this video is an ad, bro. All of this is all of the Twitter employees shrieking at the sky over Elon Musk going, and going to the Twitter headquarters and taking over. He also, by the way, changed his biographical description on his Twitter profile to Chief Twit and added his- Wait. Oh, yeah. That's it? He just like said Elon is owning the libs and he'll finally make the business uh, viable by overpaying billions of dollars for a company that has no discernible way to like get in the green. And then he said, and now we're moving on to like, oh, well, he's owning all the libs that work at Twitter. His location as Twitter HQ, Leslie Berland, the chief marketing officer for Twitter, tweeted out, Elon is in the SF office this week meeting with folks, walking the halls, continuing to dive in on the important work y'all do. If you're in San Francisco and see him around, say hi. Well, this follows hard on a bunch of Twitter employees issuing a letter to Elon Musk and the board of directors. And I gotta say, the, the entitlement mentality of so many people in the tech sector is truly astonishing. Maybe they should go learn to code if Elon Musk fires them. Quote, we, the undersigned Twitter workers, believe the public conversation Wait, what? What do they think that people at Twitter do? Wait, what?
Did you just tell a bunch of fucking programmers that they need to learn to code? Like, what's the joke there? How does Ben Shapiro think Twitter operates? Like, how does he think that, like, a, a, a website, a platform like Twitter can, like, you know, continue existing? Like, what, does he think it's just, like, a bunch of people sitting in a room, a bunch of liberal arts majors sitting in a room, and they're just like, who do we cancel next? Uh, uh, throw them in the cancel pile. That's the only way this company can continue uh, existing. You know, just they're like they're like picking Ben Shapiro's uh, account and like throwing it into a cauldron and then the cauldron lights on fire. And that's how you fucking continue. Like they're a bunch of witches. <laughs> what the fuck? Is in jeopardy. Elon Musk's plan to laugh 75 percent of Twitter workers will hurt Twitter's ability to serve the public conversation. A threat of this magnitude is reckless, undermines our users and customers' trust in our platform, and is a transparent act of worker intimidation. Wait, wait, wait. So if I buy a company and I decide that 75% of you are useless, that's worker intimidation? Well, I mean, I feel like all workers should be slightly intimidated that they might do their job if they are useless and not adding to the bottom line productivity of the company. And again, Twitter's price earnings ratio was just a couple of months ago at like 160, 160, which is insane. Yeah, I actually took their market cap and I divided that out. And it looks like my company here at Daily Wire may earn more on a yearly basis than Twitter does. Twitter has significant effects on societies and communities across the globe. Notice how he didn't fucking lay off the, the coders, dude. And he laid off like three people in the fucking executive rank. That's so strange because he said he would lay off 75% of the company. Why didn't he do that? Huh. It's just weird that he didn't do that. That's so strange that he didn't do that. These guys are not real. These guys are not real engineers. I am going to fucking kiss myself. The amount of times that dumb motherfuckers in this chat have sent me Mr. Ligma as a real engineer. That was laid off. It literally says the journalist never confirmed that these were former Twitter employees. It appears to be a fucking hoax in the link you sent me. Fuck. What is Ligma? Somebody tell me what Ligma is! Oh. God damn it, dude. Say the workers. As we speak, Twitter is helping to uplift independent journalism in Ukraine and Iran, as well as powering social movements around the world. So, what exactly were their demands? They actually made demands of the person who just bought their company and will presumably put them on the breadlines. Quote We demand Elon Musk explicitly commit. Dude. It's so funny that, like, Ben is literally saying, Elon owns you. Like, he is like, he's your god king. Like, how dare you fucking speak out against your boss? Like, it's such a wild, it's such a wildly transparent fucking disdain for the working class. But because Americans are so goddamn cucked, they can't even comprehend it. Not even thinking about it as like. They're not even thinking about it like it's a thing. Uh, like it's, it's weird.
to preserve our benefits. Those both listed in the merger agreement and not, e.g. remote work. So we insist that you allow us to continue to work not from the office. We demand leadership to establish and ensure fair severance policies for all workers before and after any change in ownership. We demand dignity, transparent, prompt, and thoughtful communication around our working conditions. We demand to be treated with dignity and to not be treated as mere pawns in a game played by billionaires. Sincerely, Twitter workers. Aw, oh, single sad tear for, for the Twitter workers. Uh, it's, so, it's so sad. You demand to not be treated as, as pawns by the people who sign your paycheck? That's, that's called being an employee. It's not being a pawn. It's how you're paid for your job. If you don't do your job, you're going to go away. That is what's happening here. And it, it is truly amazing to hear people who are paid. Okay. So this coverage so far has been the first half of it before he went into some weird, like, fucking used car salesman ad was just basically saying, like, Elon Musk is low-key kind of stupid for buying Twitter. The company is, like, shitty. Doesn't know how to make money. No discernible way, mean of, means of, of generating revenue or turning profit. Then he turned around and said, it's because, like, you know, they're gay and eating hot chip and playing foosball instead of working, which is, of course, an idiotic assessment considering that, um, you know, all of those measures are put in place by the company, including every other company, including Tesla, including most Silicon Valley companies to keep workers uh, inside of the workplace for longer. Um, then he turned around and just said, Elon is owning the libs and that's awesome. And now he's just going on a random fucking tirade about how workers suck and they're spoiled for saying, Hey, we demand to be, uh, governed with dignity. Stop killing this man. I mean, th this is so lame. Like, he just, why does anybody fucking watch this and go, I wonder if anyone recognized that. Elon needs to buy YouTube next because he's quickly become a censored cesspool. But there are a lot of hardcore engineers at Twitter who are happy as hell to have Elon Musk come in and blow it out. They're narcissistic and entitled, but they're smart enough not to sign their names to that list of demands. Can you imagine employees making it so identify, so easy to identify who should be fired? Thanks for nothing says that. It's like, brother, the inequality that you are championing right now is one that you would not benefit from. I hate how little solidarity working class Americans have with other working class Americans. Like, he's fantasizing about another person being fired from their fucking jobs in an unjustifiable manner. So cucked. So mind-bogglingly cucked, dude. I incredible. Insane. To work at Twitter, complain that they are pawns in Game of Life, like Mongo from Blazing Saddles. And the reality is that for everybody who uses Twitter, many of us feel as though we are pawns in the hands of a vengeful group of petty and ridiculous gods in San Francisco who determine whether or not your freedom of speech will simply be rejected. At any random moment, if you say that a man is a man and a woman is a woman, your account could just disappear. It's like, it's so fucked up. I just want to say transphobic shit. First of all, no one would fucking... You were saying a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Okay. Because like that implies trans men are also men and trans women are also women, right? No, he's not saying that. He's saying like, I want to be transphobic, but Twitter won't let me. It's so fucked up. <laughs> Just don't do it, man. Sometimes you go to a fucking fancy restaurant. They're like, hey, you got to wear a jacket. Okay, and if you don't have one, they give you one, right? I'm sure Ben has done that. He follows the code of conduct in his religion. He wears the kippah, right? He doesn't have an issue with that. Why can't you just be fucking normal and, and you know, use the platform and follow the fucking rules?
Yeah. He's like, he's going to run away. Yeah, because I'm trying to eat fast. I'm trying to eat fast so I can get through the eating portion of the fucking segment so people shut the fuck up about what I'm eating. So I can quickly and, and, and rapidly fucking deliver the top of the hour ad break. Because at the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the one minute ad break now. It's not about freedom of speech. They just want to be horrible. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start misgendering again. Just because you grow your hair and wear a dread doesn't make you a woman. Get everything you've ever wanted to say out of your system and keep saying it until the end of time. Never let anyone silence you. How about you speak out on the fucking Malaysian government? Oh, wait, you can't. You live in Malaysia and you can't do that. So shut the fuck up about American shit, okay? Also, when did Matt Wall stop misgendering people? It's like, not like he ever stopped. N-word usage up 500% since purchase? No shot. Evidence suggests that bad actors are trying to test the limits on Twitter. Several posts on 4chan encourage users to amplify derogatory slurs. For example, over the last 12 hours, the usage of N-word has increased nearly 500% from the previous average. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the the N word per hour is off the fucking charts right now, okay? Yeah, when they're not unsuccessfully trying to murder Paul Pelosi, an 84-year-old man, this is what the 4chan losers are fucking engaging in. Into the ether. It's happened to libs of TikTok about seven times at this point. The Babylon Bee is still suspended for noting that men are not women and women are not men. Been working and really, this isn't about Elon Musk year. taking over Twitter and running it like a business. What this is really about is they're angry at Elon Musk's vision of free speech. Now, she babble on this bee. There is no Overton window. Presumably, Elon Musk will still have policies on violence and harassment even after he takes over Twitter. But what Elon Musk believes, it seems, is that as many voices as possible should be heard and that the best recipe for a very, very bad voice is for everybody to basically get to sound off on that very bad voice. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We will get into He literally just said no free speech for the employees of a company. Like, he just complained about Twitter employees being like, hey, we're going to exercise our free speech here and tell you, like, please treat us with dignity. He spent the first half of the second, like, post-ad break shitting on employees. For fucking doing free speech. Said they don't have that right. And then turned around and went, why can't I be transphobic? My bitch is gay. I just, like, none of it fucking makes sense. Not, none of what Ben said here makes sense in any meaningful capacity. But hey, Kanye's back, Ben. Maybe he'll have some wonderful ideas about Jewish media again on Twitter, you know? <laughs> 